Welcome to The Rock. We hope what you watch today inspires you. And we'd love to hear your questions and comments via Twitter at The Rock of York. You can also find us on Facebook or contact us through the website at www.rockofyork.co.uk. In the meantime, let's crack on. I need your attention, okay? Church Sucks is the title of my message tonight. Uh, I would like to feel that we could have a cell phone, mobile phone free area for half an hour. Um, because the message that sometimes is conveyed is, and church does suck, that's why I spend all the time on my phone instead of listening. <laughs> so don't worry, I feel that sometimes as well. Go on, put a picture up. Who knows what this is? This furry creature. This is a wombat, which for your information is a, a native Australian marsupial. Wombats actually have a pouch, just like kangaroos have a pouch, but the pouch is the other way around. The reason being that wombats um, are very low to the ground and they dig burrows. So if the pouch was that way, little baby wombat's gonna get covered in dirt, so the pouch is the other way. Clever, isn't it? Um, the distinctive features of the wombat are not its clever use of its bulk. These wombats look small, but they grow about yay big, and they actually weigh uh, about 40 kilos, about 88 pounds is the weight of one of these babies here. And their butt, much like some of you, I'm sure, would like to have is, is hard as rock. It's like a, it's like a butt to be desired. It's, <laughs> it's solid. And they use their bulk very often because they're burrowing animals that if another animal, let's say a fox, tries to get in the burrow, and they're in the burrow, they will turn away from the fox, they will let the fox start to climb over them, and then they will push up, and with their bulk will suffocate the fox against the roof of the burrow using their bulk. But that's not the main distinctive feature. Nor is it the fact that this tubby little furball, which let's be honest it is, it's not being derogatory, it's a tubby little furball, just call it like it is. Um, can run at 25 miles an hour. That's 40 kilometers in new money. That's pretty fast. There's most of us, well, certainly those of us who are a little tubbier have no chance of keeping up with the wombat. Uh, if we knew its secret, it would be fascinating. But tubby little furball it is, 25 miles an hour, but that's not its most distinctive feature. No, its unique claim to fame is something that no other creature on the face of the planet can do. And this is its claim to fame. Square poop. The wombat is the only creature on the planet whose poo is square-shaped. I kid you not. This is not photoshopped. This is genuine. Their poo is the perfect cube. In fact, it's so perfectly cubed that a dice manufacturer would be proud of it. I mean, you can see it is amazing. Now, the mind boggles. First of all, I thought, well, you know, sorry to be a bit rude, but they must have a square butthole. You know, I mean, <laughs> it's rule number one. You know, medically speaking, of course. But then you're thinking, yeah, that's fine, I can understand that, but how, if you did have that, how do you make it a cube? How do you do that? And these babies put these cubes everywhere. They'll attach them to chicken wire on a chicken rung, perfectly cubed, and you think, how did that get there? And there's these cubes of wombat poop on the chicken wire. Uh, they also say it's very clever because wombats like to use rocky ground, and the truth is when they mark their territory, they do it more with their poop than they do with their pee. 
And so they have this clever thing where if, if a wombat puts its poop on a rock, it doesn't roll off. Because it it's square, it's a cube. It stays. So that's how these creatures put their mark on their, on their territory with this cube-shaped poop. Now, this knowledge is not going to change your life. You may win a pub quiz with this, but it is not going to change your life. Nor is it going to change the world that you now can walk out of these doors saying, do you know that the wombat, which is a marsupial, that has its pouch the opposite way around to a kangaroo and crushes foxes on the roof of its burrow and runs at 25 miles an hour, poops perfect cubes. That knowledge is not going to change the world. But some stuff just might if only you take time to listen and engage. So I've had more attention from some of you talking about wombat poop than I get when I'm talking about stuff that could actually change your life and change the world. Do you get my point? Okay, is that point taken? Now, it appears evident to me that some of you do think that church sucks. Now, I hope I'm not being offensive to some of our older generation using that terminology. It's not a rude word in common popular culture. It's a common way of saying something's not very good, something really doesn't work, I just don't really like to be there. But it seems evident that some of you think church sucks. Well, one of my dear friends who is bright and clever, extremely intelligent, um, was the, um, the head of a big ER department in hospital. He's just bright as buttons. Um, he pastored a large church in Michigan, and from his experience there, he bought the web domain name churchsucks.org. That was his conclusion to half a life being involved in this thing called church. Now, it's rather sad, but his name is uh uh, and he usually listens to us, and he's my dear friend, and he loves what we, what we say here. And I would like the domain name off him because I think it's absolutely fabulous. Churchsucks.org. So the question is, well, does it? Does it? Does church suck? There are many times when I think it does. So don't be shy. In our desire for a a better, more appropriate expression of this something that is the divine, this something that is the God, the Abba of Jesus, this something of this remarkable, radical person called Jesus the Christ, sometimes I think what we do in expression of that really does suck. And often it's very evident that anybody that wasn't raised in it sits out there thinking that really sucks while we suck on it. The classic verse in the Bible on this subject is found in Matthew chapter 16. And it's verse 18, a very, very well known verse. I tell you, you are Peter, Jesus said. I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades, or in some versions it says hell, which is completely wrong, the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Or some other Bibles say the gates of Hades will not overpower it. Now, understanding this verse, there have been several theories. One, of course, is the Catholic theory that Jesus was saying to Peter, you're the rock, I'm going to build my church on you. Well, knowing Peter and knowing what needed to be done, that would have been a pretty dumb choice. Seriously. I don't know, if I was Jesus and this was important, I don't know anybody that I'll say on this person, I, you know, I like, I like lots of you, there's lots of people I like, but I wouldn't do that. So, so I think that's flawed, and I think what emerged from, from that thinking is also flawed. Now, you, you slide into, um, into the more Protestant side, and, um, you know, people say, Jesus was saying, on this rock, I'll build my church, okay, on this rock. 
on me. That's got, that's got mileage as well. Um, there's also other branches that believe that this was a revelation and therefore on the rock of revelation God would build his church. Some of those things have, have, um, they have reason to consider them. But I'm not sure that was actually the point that Jesus was making. See, if we were now where Jesus was at the time, the question is what image would we be seeing in accompaniment to his words? And in that case, what would our thinking be around what he was saying? Because there is a context to this which is very clear. So, if you go a few verses earlier, you will see that Jesus with his followers was approaching a place called Caesarea Philippi. Okay, it's very important. Caesarea Philippi. So, so let's stand where they stood so we can see what they saw, so we can understand what they heard. So, we're now... We're now over here, we're looking at a pic. Obviously, that's not a real photograph of... No. I, I apologize. I looked for one, but, um, but I couldn't find one. Um, this is an artist's impression from the geological remains of Caesarea Philippi. Caesarea Philippi was up on a hill beneath those. You see all those a steep cliff in the background. And uh, so we're here. This is where we are, okay? This, this is, this is our, we're now in the, in, in the Scripture. They're approaching Caesarea Philippi. Very important. So we're now looking at this as Jesus talks. Now, on the left is a temple to Caesar um, because he was, he was butt-kissing was, was Philip, who was the ruler of this region, who called it after Caesar and himself, Caesarea Philippi. So there's a temple for Philip's sake on the right there with the steps, and the temple on the left was built for Caesar. Now, in the middle, this place that you see in the middle, was all part of the other temple because what mostly went on here in Caesarea Philippi, this was the center of worship for Pan, who was the goat god, okay? Pan was half human, half goat. There are some very rude parts about Pan that I won't talk about tonight, but he, he was a god very much into sexuality and fertility. So one of the most common forms of worship was we all, well, not we personally speaking, but we, if we were at Pan's temple, all have a big orgy, okay, in worship of Pan, because we believed it was all about fertility. Now, the problem is that that this city was basically built around the whole projection of who Pan was. So the whole city kind of, you can figure out what happened in the city. It was all built around Pan. So we, we're, now, we're now, this is what we're looking at when Jesus starts to talk, okay? Now, what we have to do is just look a little deeper because if you look behind the temple on the left, you'll see there is a cave there. So if we remove the temples, if we take them out of the way, you'll be able to see a little better what that is. Okay. Now remember, this is a cultural thing. The culture here, it's the sanctuary of Pan. Okay. So we remove that, don't we, Robert? And what we see behind is this. Okay. Of course, now... The temple's gone. You can see the ruins over here on, on this side to my left, on your right. We've removed that temple. This was clearly visible from a distance. You could see it behind that temple. And what you see is a big black cave. Now, no prize, but you'll feel better if you can answer the question, what do you think that cave was called? Cave, yeah. Okay. We can grade that one. What was it called? Have, have a guess from Jesus' conversation. I will build my church and... Uh, 
this cave was known and was labeled as the gates of Hades, right? So bear in mind, we're here, okay? We're looking, we see that pan God is worship. There is a culture. There is a culture that is not the culture that Jesus is looking to build. But within this culture is a domination. There's the domination of Rome and there's the domination of, of, of slavery to Rome. So Philip, who's supposed to be our king, is in, well, yeah, I was going to say he's in bed with Caesar, but he might have been, I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's pan. It might be, who knows? Anyway, Philip and Caesar, of course, were rubbing up to each other in all of this. It's a, it's a culture, it's a dominating culture that stands over us and is looking down and sending a message to us. And within that culture is the gates of Hades, okay? So now, so when Jesus said, on this rock, I will build my church, which, which is the rock that he was looking at? He's looking at this rock. Now, it didn't literally mean Jesus was going to get the builders in and will now build a church up there on this rock because it was bigger than that, okay? But this is the rock he's looking at, okay? Okay, guys, you're all very good. You've followed me and pretty good and Peter, amazing, because the question was, who do men say that I am? Who, who really am I? He's challenging them to say, okay, you better get to grips with this. It's not enough just to, oh, Jesus, that person in the Bible. You better get to grips with this. Who, who are they saying I am? Because Peter says, you know, some say this, that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. He blesses Peter, but then he talks about this. He says, on this rock, look, this is what we look, this dominant culture, this authoritarian culture that, that governs people and brings fear into their lives, said, over this, this is where I'm going to build what it is I'm going to build, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Now, the belief was that demon spirits came and went through this cave. This was, to use a modern term, this was the gate of hell. And they absolutely believed that demon spirits and Pan and his nymphs, Pan had nymphs, you've learned something else there, would come and go from this place because they believed that that marked an entrance to something that brought death and condemnation and fear and aggravation. But Jesus, so we're here looking, and Jesus said, I'm going to build my church on this rock, and the gates of Hades are not going to prevail against it. The most dominant thing in the process of this culture was that it was backed by Hades, backed by hell itself. I could argue with you that's one of the reasons I think church sucks, because most of the church message is backed by Hades. It's backed by hell. We build the temple with hell behind and say, oh, by the way, just look at what's behind this. So Jesus comes in to correct that image. I will build my, and the gates of hell, will not prevail against it. So, so when we look behind, we, we see what, what's, what's going on now. It's very interesting that when Jesus talked, he, it's a specific Greek word that's used. Some of you have heard me talk about this before, but it's fascinating. The word church shouldn't be there because it comes from a Greek word that's never used in the text of the Bible. That's been put in because church actually means a religious meeting place. So if we use that word, we say, Jesus said, on this rock I will build my religious meeting place. Well, he evidently didn't. But church sucks sometimes because that's what it's become. So Jesus used a fascinating word, and it's not recorded here in this translation of the Bible, but it's translated from the Greek word ekklesia. The word ekklesia was a Greek word, and for five centuries before Jesus was born, the Greeks were using this word. It was a word that was used for when, in a community, a group of ordinary people were called together and empowered to make decisions that would change their world. Ordinary people 
changing their world. And it worked in that system. So Jesus was very careful what he chose to say. See, he could have said, on this rock I will build my temple. And we would have all figured out, oh, what he's going to do is replace the temple to Caesar and the temple to Philip and the temple to, to, to Pan. He's going to replace it with a wonderful St. Peter's. He could have said, a little softer, I'll build my synagogue. What would have happened then is we immediately transfer all our religious thinking of what we think church is, and we start to practice it thinking Jesus has authorized us to do church this way. So Jesus chose a non-church word. Ecclesia had no religious connotation or connection whatsoever. So here's Jesus saying, look guys, here's the deal. I'm not going to build something religious like that. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to build something completely different, okay? And what I'm going to build, this culture, all this stuff that you're seeing that has dominated you and shaped your religious thinking and controlled you and brought this fear of this thing called Hades will never be able to overcome it. This will overcome the culture that destroys you. It will overcome the culture that binds you. It will overcome the culture that restricts you because I'm going to build this thing called my ecclesia. And so there was no religious connotation. Church sucks. Because church has become what Jesus never intended it to be. It was always about, in Jesus' mind, ordinary people. I love this. I repeat this a hundred times, two hundred times a year. The qualification to be part of an ecclesia was simply be an ordinary person. That's why some religious people can't enter in. That's why Jesus said to Pharisees and law teachers, you can't get in here, you're not getting in, but he said prostitutes and sinners enter ahead of you. Why? Because they were aware of their ordinariness. Some of you get all ticked off because you know some people are living certain ways in here and you're thinking, why aren't you doing something about it? Because the qualification for ecclesia is ordinariness. The qualification for religious is all kinds of moral standards that make us full of self-righteousness and never deal in honesty. The ecclesia is ordinary people who come together and in that coming together, something happens that changes the world. Why haven't we changed the world? Why haven't we changed our city? Because we're still more church than we are ecclesia, and church sucks. So gee, whatever it was Jesus was planning to build wasn't anything that your religious models, even the Hebrew Old Testament religious model, it was none of that, none of the above. Now, do you understand why sometimes I think church sucks? Because I'm supposed to figure out what none of the above is. How do we do this? Well, it's none of the above, okay? Have sympathy, pray for me, it's hard. Because we want to build an ecclesia, we want to build ordinary people coming together, but not just so we can have a happy, happy club, so we can change the world, so you can change your world. Three things. Church sucks because church is a misnomer. That means it's the wrong name. However, you will sound a lot less weird using this name than Ecclesia. So still use this name because you'll sound really weird. If you start going around saying, I belong to an ecclesia, you'll, you just will, you'll sound weird. Understand it, right? Understand when you use the word church, it's just for communication purposes. But don't think church, because what will happen if you're not careful? You'll think all those things that Jesus said, we're looking at all that stuff. It's not going to be this, boys. And where we're going to plant this thing is going to be right there. Now, he wasn't meaning, as I've said, right on the rock there in front of that little arch, which was the main place of worship to Pan. It was meaning on this rock, on what they think is their solid ground, is right where we're going to plant this 
this thing, and it's not a building, it's not a system, it's not a structure, it's a power. And when you get into that power, it changes your life and you change your world. Second thing, church sucks because it always seems to drift into institutional and organizational rigidity, ultimately looking like any other religion, barring the difference in detail. Most of the difference, if we'll be honest, in Christian religion and other religions is just in the detail. Now, I appreciate there's importance in the detail, but if the detail's that great, it shouldn't look like that just with a different story. And that was Jesus' point. It's not going to be temple, it's not going to be synagogue, and it's not going to be this. It's going to replace all of this. And the third thing, church sucks because people who miss the point make it suck. That's you and me. Church sucks because people who miss the point make it suck. So we all have to take some responsibility and we all have to say if we don't want church to suck, let's do something about it. Let's do something about it because we get the point. Let's do something about it because we're not going to drift into institutional, organizational rigidity. And let's do something about it because it's a misnomer and we understand that we are an ecclesia, but we're not going to sound weird by using that name. (laughs) The point is this. Jesus was saying, if you get involved... In what I am doing, this is what he's saying to those guys, here we are. And he's basically, this is what he's really saying. If you get involved in what I am doing, not only will it change your life, but you will change the world. How many times do we come together, don't have a flipping intention in a million of trying to get a hold of something that will change the world? But I can get everybody's attention if I talked about cubed wombat poo. Kind of shows where we're at, doesn't it? When actually there should be a hunger within us that's saying, I want to be changed and I want to change the world. So Jesus was saying, if you grasp this, if you get a hold of this, it will change you. And you'll change the world because he was saying the power in you will be greater than anything the culture can throw at you. See, we're all where we are because of what culture has thrown at us. The demands, the restrictions, the, the conflicts, the expectations and all that stuff. We're all, Jesus was saying if you get this, the power in you will be greater than anything that the culture can throw at you. That's for every one of you ordinary people, including me in here tonight. The power in you will be greater than anything the culture can throw at you. I will build my ecclesia and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Not fear, not intimidation, not condemnation, not the demands of common culture will not prevail against this. I want to be part of that. I want to be part of that ecclesia. I want to be part of that image that Jesus had. So tonight, how about you help us make church not suck? Hey? Father, we put this in your hands tonight. Only so we can take it back out of your hands knowing that you touched it. Because we wouldn't dare put all the responsibility on you. We are not going to fall into the church nonsense of all, we're just going to pray really hard for revival because it's all God's fault. No, we're going to say, God, we do think in many ways church sucks, but we know Ecclesia doesn't. And we know what you said doesn't. And we know at times we've made a big, awful mess of it and struggle with it, but we are here for a fresh revelation, a fresh understanding for ourselves to make church not suck. Every one of us, from me as a senior leader, right down to the person who comes the least often, we want to make church not suck anymore, because actually 
real church, real ecclesia, what you promised, doesn't suck. And we also want to do it for our world because we want to grab again the attitude of being world changers, that something inside of us is not just passing a little time, even on a Saturday night, and then thinking, well, I can't remember that. But anyway, what I do know is that wombat's poo, cubed poo, something deeper, some, something more significant touches our lives. Because you spoke these powerful words in a very specific location. Do you know that Jesus only went one time to that location to speak this one message to that one group of people because it was going to, it was going to describe everything that he was about and saying, if you guys, if you can catch this on this rock, I will build this. My belief is this, that if we'll understand that it's the rock of culture, it's the rock of all this stuff and all that, he says, if you'll catch this, I'll build it. I'll build it. I will build my ecclesia. If you'll catch this, I just need that fertile ground because it's never going to be built out of bricks and mortar and slate and stone. It's going to be built out of you. So help us, Father, tonight, sincerely, to make church not suck in Jesus' name. Amen. We're done. All right. Thanks for watching. You can find out more about all the Rock is doing locally and internationally at www.rockofyork.co.uk. And why not support The Rock from wherever you are? Just hit the donate button now to help us help others.